virus. A vast array of aquatic animal species is formed in high density in fresh water, brackish, and marine systems where they are exposed to new environments and potentially new diseases. On farm stress may compromise their ability to combat infection, and farming practices facilitate tropic transmission of that disease. Viral pathogens, whether they have been established for decades or whether they are newly emerging as disease threats, are particularly challenging since there are few, if any, efficacious treatments and the development of effective viral vaccines for delivery in aquatic systems remains elusive. The basic structure of virus. The viruses are ultramicroscopic organisms with size ranges of 10 to 300 nanomicrons. An electron microscope is required to visualize viruses. Because of their size, viruses are able to pass through filters of 0.5 micron per size. The basic structure of a virion consists of a capsid which encloses a nucleic acid genome. The capsid is made up of identical protein subunits called capsomeres, while the genome is either a ribonucleic acid or RNA or a deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. The combined viral components is called the nucleic capsid. This may have an envelope which is lipid in nature. The viruses that do not have an envelope are considered naked viruses. The viruses have cubical or polyhedral, helical or complex morphology or symmetry. These microbes are obligately parasitic, multiplying only in its live host. In animal cells, the virus initially attaches on a specific cell surfaces, components called receptors. So what are the causative factors of viral infection? First, the water temperature and age of the fish or shrimps are significant factors that influence the development of that viral infection. Most fish viral infections occur at low water temperatures, hence very few viral infections among fishes in warm water culture systems are reported. In addition, most viral infections occur among fry or fingerlings often causing severe mortalities, while other fish or shrimp develop resistance or are hardly affected. Stress from handling Poor water quality, high stocking density, and poor nutrition also affect the severity of that viral infection. What are the major viral infections in fish? Some of the major viral infections in aquaculture under family herpes viruses or aloherpes viruses and genera novirhabdovirus and iridoviruses are channel catfish virus disease or CZVD. Infectious hematopoietic necrosis, viral hemorrhagic septicemia, viral erythrocytic necrosis, Episodic hematopoietic necrosis, largemouth bass virus, and megalocyte viruses. The other major viral diseases include episodic ulcerative syndrome or EUS, grass carp hemorrhagic disease, a spinning tilapia syndrome, viral nervous necrosis, lymphocystis disease. Grouper iridovirus of Taiwan disease and sleepy grouper disease. In pinnate shrimps, major viral disease include white spot syndrome disease or WSSV disease. Second, yellow head virus or YHB disease. Third, monodon baculovirus or MBV disease. Fourth, infectious hypodermal and hematopoietic virus or IHHNV disease. Next, hepatopancreatic and parvo-like virus or HPV disease. In terms of the viral transmission, aquatic viruses are transmitted from fish or shrimp to other, from water to fish or shrimp, or from reservoir by horizontal transmission. Disease transmission can also result from brooder to eggs or fry via 
vertical transmission. The known reservoir of viral pathogens are farmed fish or crustacean, imported, wild or other aquatic animals and plants, and survivors of viral epizootes. The viral organisms affected some of the economically important fishes affected includes catfish or clarias species and ictalurus species, snakeheads or opisepalus striatus, carp or cyprinus species, tilapia, milkfish or chanos chanos, grouper or epinepilus species, rabbit fish or ciganus species, sea bass or lattice calcarifer, mulet or mugil cephalus and pinnade shrimps. For the diagnosis, the diagnostic techniques for viral disease of fish are relatively standard and can be made by a combination of various methods such as pathological and histopathological examination, virus isolation on cell structure, molecular techniques including conventional and real-time polymerase chain reactions in cytohybridization, and various immunodiagnostic techniques. Now let us move on to the treatment um, for these viral diseases in aquaculture species. In general, no approved or effective treatments exist for viral diseases in aquaculture. Vaccine development for economically important viruses is still ongoing. And some vaccines exist for some viruses. So yung mga specific vaccines, nag exist lang sila for specific viruses too. And they are either um, available in the USA or internationally. For example, um, ang isang farmer, um, nagkulture siya, ng, nagkukulture siya ng mga different species. And tinamaan ng virus ang isa sa mga species na kinukulture niya. So, if it is not locally available, kailangan pa niya mag-import from um, ibang bansa. So, it is a very big hassle for a farmer kapag uh, tinamaan ng virus yung mga kinukulture niyang species and vaccines are not low cost or cheap cost. These vaccines are expensive kasi nga hindi sila locally available. Now let us move on for the prevention of these viral diseases in our aquaculture species. So in generally, meron tayong basic consideration para maiwasan yung occurrence of viral diseases. Yung paggamit ng virus-free fry for stocking in ponds is highly recommended. So, number one, specific precautions of egg washing with ozone-disinfected seawater using fine screens for inlet water and adherence to strict hygiene, stress test of shrimp post larvae with 100 um, parts per meter, formalin for 30 minutes with aeration and stocking only tolerant um, post larvae. 30 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes bago gamitin. And yung pagpapakain ng mga feeds na mayroong 100 parts per meter phosphated ascorbic acid or MAP sa loob ng um, 92 days ay sinasabing effective for treating viral infections of our aquaculture species. White spot disease is caused by the white spot syndrome virus of the virus species Baculovirus. It affects all stages of shrimps like Pineus morodon, Pineus chinensis, Pineus indicus, etc. and also other crustaceans such as Scylla serrata, Charybdis feriatus, Helis tridens, etc. The diagnosis of the white spot syndrome virus typically signs of the presence of distinct white cuticular spots, most apparent at the exoskeleton and epidermis of the sea shrimp about two days after onset. The white spots start at the carapace and fifth and sixth abdominal segments that later affect the entire body shell. The moribund shrimp display red discoloration and have loose cuticle. Affected shrimps manifest surface swimming and gathering at pond dikes with broken antennae. Clinical signs are diagnostic of this disease. 
However, recent reports indicate that some bacteria may induce similar signs. Hence, confirmation with other diagnosis tests should be done. Demonstration of the presence of hypertrophied nuclei in stained squashes, smears of epithelial and connective tissues of the gills or stomach of affected shrimp. The histological section show widespread cellular degeneration and severe nuclear hypertrophy, chromatin margination, and eosinophilic intranuclear inclusion in the subcuticular epithelium of the shell, gill, stomach, connective tissues, hematopoietic tissues, lymphoid organ, anterior organ, and nervous tissues. Gross pathological signs are Changes in body color, skin erosion resultant in hemorrhagic dermal lesions, scale protrusions, exophthalmus and opacity of the eye lens or the cataract, abdominal distension due to the fluid or enlargement of spleen and other organs. Microscopic pathological signs are lesions in the brain including eudema, focal hemorrhages in the leptomeninges, and capillary congestion in both the white and gray matter and neural degeneration. Congestion of internal organs like liver, kidney, spleen, brain, and gills with foci of gliosis and perivascular coughing of lymphocytes in the brain cortex and melanomacrophage proliferation in liver and spleen. Formation of synchyta in the epithelium of hepatocytes in synchial hepatitis of the liver, and as well ocular inflammation including endophthalmitis and cataractous changes of the lens. In terms of prevention, do not buy naupli or the uh, first larval stage of menicostration or the PL or the post larval shrimp from a source that could be or is infected with the virus. It is likely that iodine and water Washes remove and destroy the virus when used on eggs, the ovary, and the post larval shrimp. It is essential that this process be consistent. Hatcheries must maintain good biosecurity measures and examine each batch of animal. The hatchery needs to be constructed to prevent the introduction of the virus from the ocean. Minimize the stress on the shrimp wherever possible. Other recommended methods to try and control the presence of the virus include a screening of stuck animals for the presence of the virus, filtering intake water into the pan to eliminate some vectors or use pesticides to kill the vectors before stocking the pans. Another recommendation is to avoid the exchange of water. The ability to aerate the water mechanically without distorting water exchange might be very useful in those pans where oxygen levels cannot be managed without water exchange. Use immune stimulants and optimize nutrition. The role of vitamins A, B, C, and D and micronutrients such as selenium are well documented in minimizing the effects of stress and should be routinely added to diets at higher than usual levels at times of stress. The tilapia lake virus disease is caused by the tilapia lake virus or TILV. It appears to cause disease mainly in tilapia and tilapia hybrids such as Oreochromis species and tilapia species but has also been detected causing disease in other wild chicklids such as Saroterodon galileus and Tristramella species. In terms of diagnosis, animals with this disease may show one or more of these signs but the pathogen may still be present in the absence of any signs. Disease signs at the farm, tank, or pond level are sudden unexpected increase in mortalities which is greater than 2% per day over several days during the summer months. Cumulative mortality up to 90% within one month of stocking fingerlings into freshwater or brackish water pads. High mortalities in 1 to 50 gram fish, lower mortalities in medium or large fish. Also, disease signs also include lethargy, loss of appetite, and respiratory distress. Electron microscopy 
PCR, DNA probe, Western blot, and infection bioassay are confirmatory diagnostic tests. In terms of treatment, currently there are no effective protocols or medication to reduce the impact of TILV or Dilapialic virus outbreak. Genetic selection of TILB resistant tilapia rootstock and development of vaccines and appropriate biosecurity protocols may offer a long term health management solution. If tilapia lake virus is confirmed at a particular site or farm, it is advisable to depopulate the facility and perform a thorough disinfection. In prevention of the tilapia lake virus, Stress on the farm should be minimized and basic biosecurity measures including quarantine procedures should be implemented to reduce the risk of the tilapia lake virus outbreak. Viral hemorrhagic septicemia Number 1. Virus species Viral hemorrhagic septicemia Species affected Viral hemorrhagic septicemia is an infectious disease of rainbow trout, brown trout, grayling, whitefish, Pike, largemouth bass, Japanese flounder, and turbot. Number two, diagnosis. Virus can be isolated from cell cultures and confirmed immunologically by virus neutralization, immunofluorescence, ELISA, immunoperoxidase, staining or reverse transcriptase (PCR). The serological methods such as neutralization and PCR may be more important for detection of carrier fish while the others are useful for fish with overt disease. Fish that become infected experience hemorrhaging of their internal organs, skins, and muscle. The kidney and liver are the most affected organs. Bleeding in air bladder, kidney swelling, bleeding in gills and fins, liver discoloration are important symptoms. Fishes show abnormal movement and position in water. Swollen eyes, general anemic condition, reduced hemoglobin percentage, swollen belly, hemorrhages in the air bladder and in the muscles, red intestine, and pale gills. Number 3. Treatment There is no effective treatment of viral hemorrhagic septicemia. Number 4. Prevention Fishes should be brought from the uncontaminated farms. Infected or dead fishes should be immediately removed. High stocking densities should always be avoided. Disinfected ponds with clean bottoms should be selected. Yellowhead virus disease Number 1. Virus species Yellowhead virus Species affected The virus infects sub-adults and broodstock of P. monodon, P. merguinesis, P. vanamei, P. stylirostris, P. styliferus, M. ensis, Palaemon styliferus, Metapeneus affinis was experimentally infected with the virus. Number 2. Diagnosis Signs of disease and paste contrast microscopy of fresh hemolymph stayed with right gemsa stain shows hemocyte with karyorectic and pyconotic nuclei. Another rapid method of detection of the yellowhead virus involved fixing and staining whole gill fragments for one hour in Davidson's fixative with acetic acid replaced by 50% concentrated hydrochloric acid, staining with H and E, dehydrating and keeping in silene before mounting in per mount. The appearance of basophilic bodies in characteristic of yellowhead virus. Histopathological analysis show extensive cellular necrosis in the ectodermal and mesenchymal tissues. In addition, the presence of basophilic, usually spherical perinuclear cytoplasmic inclusions in the hemocytes, lymphoid organ, hematopoietic tissues, pillar and epithelial cells in the gills, spongy connective tissue cells in the Subcutis, muscle, gut, atinal, gland, gonad, nerve tracts, ganglia, and other cells of ectodermal and mesodermal origin with observed. Histopathology in lymphoid organs resembles that caused by WSSV by electron microscopy. The virus is non 
occluded within the cytoplasmic vacuole. A western blot method for detection of virus was established by Nadala et al. 1997. In addition, the RT-PCR method for this virus was developed. Also, SYBR green real-time RT-PCR was developed for yellowhead virus quantification. For a more rapid detection, the RT-LAMP method which is equally sensitive and specific can be used. A multiplex RT nested PCR was recently reported for the differential diagnosis of yellowhead virus from GAV. Infection bioassay is also a useful presumptive diagnostic de test. Infected shrimp develop light yellowish swollen cephalothorax and swim slowly near the surface at the edge of the pond. Before the appearance of clinical signs of disease, the shrimp develop an abnormally high feed intake and rapid growth. Thereafter, there is marked reduction in food consumption prior to cessation of feeding and the onset of rapidly accelerating mortality. The gills appear whitish, yellowish, or brown. Number 3. Treatment In Thailand reported the treatment of Pineus monodon with extracts of leaves of CLIN Acanthus nutans a Thai traditional medicine provided protection of 57.4% against yellowhead virus in shrimp fed with 1 grams over kilogram pellets respectively. Number 4. Prevention Biosecurity measures and stocking of yellowhead virus free seeds may prevent yellowhead virus disease. Hi, thank you for watching our video. We are the group 1 from BSF 3-1. I am Vladimir Dandan and here is my co-narrator. Hi, I am Ryan Deliota. Hi, I am Daniel Fakud. And of course, we will not be able to complete this presentation without the help of our team. May we introduce them to you? Our researchers who gathered the necessary data used in this presentation. I am Lailani Siblawan. I am Borjaliala Ansi Fakun. Hi, I am Cherry Jane Santiago. And I am Jennifer Mercado. And of course, with the help of our audiovisual team, I am Mary Jean Manabat. Hello, I am Emery Phyllis C. Garland and I was in charge of summarizing all of the needed info from the researchers and creating a script. Hi, I am Ryan Deliota and I gathered the pictures and background audio for this video. Hi, I am Daniel Fakud and I made this PowerPoint presentation by using the script as guide. And of course, our editors! Hello, I'm Patricia Demir I. Magnase. I was the person to gather all the files needed and did the preliminary editing for this video. Hello, my name is Erickson Magdala and I did the polishing edit as well as added the subtitles for this video. Thank you for listening and we hope you learned something.